Our next speaker is the Honorable Doug Williams. He is going to give his second speech from the Confident Communicator Manual. Uh, it's five to seven minutes long. It's, its objective is to organize your speech. The title of his speech is Don't Let the Stars Get in Your Eyes, Part Two. And Doug Williams grew up as one of those brainy kids who loved chemistry and physics in high school. In 1976, he graduated from New Mexico State University with a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering. During that same year, he discovered the metaphysical world. He has spent the last 33 years exploring both the scientific world and the intuitive world. Welcome, David, excuse me, Doug Williams, speaking on Don't Let the Stars Get in Your Eyes, Part Two. Thank you, Madam. My dad was an electrical technician. My mom is a healer. So over the years, I've had a chance to learn the distinction between science and the health sciences. Science is based on something called the scientific method. The scientific method requires scientists to do controlled, repeatable, measurable experiments. This is absolutely impossible with anything dealing with human beings. Anybody try to control another human? Anybody try to get a human to repeat exactly the same thing they just did? Anybody ever tried to figure out how to measure a human? Can't be done. So applying the scientific method to humans is absolutely fruitless. Many of our modern health sciences are not really sciences at all. They're an art. The reason they're an art is because you can't use a scientific method on humans. Some of the things that are sciences are things like anatomy. Anatomy goes through and identifies the parts of the body, and you can do that. Biochemistry is another science. You can go through and do observations, and you can do that. But things like medicine, medicine's an art. It's all guesswork. Modern medicine is less than 150 years old. Most of the things we, our modern doctors use didn't exist 50 years ago. None of these things have been tested on more than one generation. How do they know they work? How do they know what the long-term effects are? They don't know. They're guessing. Other things that are guesswork like this is all this genetic work. DNA was discovered about 50 years ago. And yet we'll go out and genetically modify things. Hey, this is great! We'll go through and take drugs that are designed to help us based on our genetic makeup, and they've been tested on you know, less than 50 years. Other areas, psychology, nutrition. Freud discovered or created psychoanalysis about 100 years ago. It's a very young area of study. Nutrition. The last 30 years, we've got all these nutritionists telling you, hey, this is how you should, you know, this is what you should eat in order to be healthy. Yeah, and you've tested this how long? Less than 30 years? What makes you think you know anything about this? This is not science. This is an art. Astrology is also an art, a very ancient art. Most people think of astrology as the horoscopes they read in the newspapers. Yeah, I do too, until about 1994 when I met a hardcore astrologer and she introduced me to what it means to be a hardcore astrologer. And I learned the horoscopes you find in the newspaper, don't take that seriously. Of course, this was after several years of realizing anything you read in the newspaper, don't take it seriously. <laughs> it's in the newspaper. Hardcore astrology is a thousand times more complex than anything the medical world can come up with. Hardcore astrology is a million times more complicated than anything Freud came up with. In hardcore astrology, well, let me show you how complicated it is. In the newspaper horoscopes, there are 12 signs of the zodiac. That divides the entire world, 7 billion people, into 12 groups. And then they do horoscopes for these 12 groups. Yeah, what a joke. Horoscope astrology, newspaper astrology, is talking about the sun sign. Where's the sun located in these 12 zodiacs? In hardcore astrology, the sun is just one of 14 orbs. An orb can be different things in our solar system. Some of them are planets. 
Uh, some of them are other heavenly bodies, such as the moon, um, Pluto, which used to be a planet, but it's not anymore. Some of them are things like the descending horizon and the ascending horizon. So of these 14 orbs, these 14 orbs can be plotted on the sky map, which is what the zodiac is. The zodiac is, okay, that point in the sky is in Capricorn. That point in the sky is in Libra. So plotting these 14 orbs against these 12 zodiac signs now gives us 168 distinct groups in which to start dividing people up in. Hey, that's a lot better than 12, but that's not all. There are also 12 houses. Each house refers to a certain area of your life. So then we take those 12 houses, put those in the 12 signs of the zodiac, and we have 144 categories just associated with houses. When we take those 144 categories, plus the uh, categories that we had from the orbs, we're now at 216 distinct groups for, for things that happen here. But that's not it, there's still some more. There's also, for every single orb, there's something called a ruler. A ruler is a special orb for each house. When you start throwing all of those together, we now have 24,192 distinct groups. Imagine that, 24,000 distinct groups. Have you ever picked up a newspaper that says, hey, we're gonna give you our daily horoscope. Find which of these 24,000 groups belongs to you, and we'll tell you what's happening in your life. Not gonna happen. But there's still more. Each sign of the zodiac in the sky is divided, is divided into 30 degrees. If I get two of these 14 orbs that have the same number, that one's a 15 and that one's a 15, they're going to interact, something like a cosmic harmonic. When you combine all these interactions between any two orbs, you now have 478 sextillion combinations. A sextillion, by the way, is one followed by 21 zeros. Hey, now we've got something we can divide 7 billion people into, and they're all distinct. But there's more! There can be interactions between sets of 3, or 4, or 5 orbs, or maybe all 14 orbs. So all these relationships change as time passes. Current astrology measures things in 4 minute intervals. So twins that are born 5 minutes apart, they're distinct. They're also distinct on where you're born. If you're born 100 miles apart, you're distinct. And this is all what it takes to describe one person. If I want to see how this person measures up to a point in time, I take this complex description of a person and compare it to this complex description of time, and then I look at all the interactions. If I want to look at two people, if I want to look at how D interacts with Suzette, I have to take his complex picture and her complex picture and bury them all together and figure out how they're going to interact. We don't know how to do this. This technology has been around for over 4,000 years. It is the ancient wisdom of the ancients. The same people who built the pyramids. The same people who generated calendar more accurate than anything we know how to do. Does it work? Yes, today's farmers and ranchers use it. None of them would think of planting crops or working cattle without checking the farmer's almanac, which is based on astrology. And so, I ask you, don't let the stars get in your eyes. Anything that deals with humanity, don't let the stars get in your eyes. Madam Toastmaster.